Hey, what's up you guys? It's Connor and today I'm going to be continuing my 2017 reading wrap up with books 51 through 55. If you've missed any of my other parts, I'll leave them all linked down below in a playlist and you can check them out at your leisure. But let's just get started. The 51st thing that I read in 2017 is going to be Will's Red Coat by Tom Ryan. Tom Ryan is the author of Following Atticus, which I read and reviewed earlier this year. So I'll leave a link to that review down below or in the card symbol. And I also have done a review on Will's Red Coat. I requested and was sent this book from the publisher because I enjoyed Following Atticus so much. So I wanted to continue learning more about Atticus, Tom, and now will. We're following Atticus really follows Tom and Atticus growing and changing and learning to love nature and and developing their relationship with each other. Will's Red Coat is less about nature and is more about Tom and Atticus adjusting to life with this new dog. At the beginning of the book, Tom ends up deciding to rescue another miniature schnauzer named Will. He was abandoned at a kill shelter, I believe, when he was 15, I think, 13 maybe. And then a rescue group rescued Will and then Tom got Will from the rescue group. But Will is completely deaf and partially blind. And so his experience of life is so much different than most of the dogs that you're going to be looking at to adopt. And so Tom and Atticus really have to adjust their lives to fit Will into it. One of my favorite parts about this book was just learning all of Will's weird quirks and how he's obsessed with flowers and he likes to listen to music and he's got a very quirky way of walking. Well, I guess he did. He has now since passed away and so has Atticus, but I'm just going to be talking about them in the present tense. And this one also includes pictures like following Atticus did. So you get to see Will in all his glory. And I really liked Will's isms. He was a really cranky old man dog and he was not going to tolerate any crap from anyone. <laughs> I thought it was going to be more about nature like the first one was, but it's not really like that because Will can't really adventure all that much. And so there's less about going through these crazy hikes in the mountains and trying to hike the 48 peaks over 4,000 feet twice in one winter. And it's more about just taking it slow and appreciating life and appreciating those around you and supporting and loving your pets and stuff like that. At times, I thought that it could be a little bit more focused on Atticus than it was on Will. So I thought it was weird that it was Will's red coat at first. And then Will really starts to take over the story towards the latter half of the book. And at one point I ended up like choking up. So yeah, it was really, really good. I ended up giving it four stars. Definitely recommend it for people that enjoy nature and, and really invest so much of themselves and their dogs like I do with Nook, wherever he is. He's right under my feet. <laughs> the next book I finished is The Battle Mage by Taryn Mathrew. This is the third and final book in the Summoner series. There is a prequel that's coming out next year, but it's not about the main character, Fletcher. At the beginning of the first book in the trilogy, Fletcher is living in a town up in the north part of Hominum, which is where the humans live. He was abandoned there as a baby and was taken in by a blacksmith. And he ends up summoning a demon with and only people of the upper elite royal classes are able to do that. And so then he has to go to the mage school and learn how to use his powers and learn about the war that is happening between the humans, elves, dwarves, and the orcs. That has been happening for a long time and how he is now having to help in that effort and keep Hominum safe. Obviously there's a lot more than that and it's also described as Lord of the Rings, Pokemon, and Harry Potter put together because of the magic. The Pokemon because they're able to summon these demons and then put them away and then summon them again and battle with them. And Lord of the Rings because of the world setup and how there's humans, elves, dwarves, orcs, goblins. Although in Lord of the Rings, orcs and goblins are the same thing and here it's not. I did a book review for this which I'll leave up in the card symbol and you can check it out if you want to. But I've also done reviews on the second book and I included the first book in one of my wrap ups from last year. So all of them are spoiler free so you can check out the whole series if you want to. I ended up giving this one four stars. The second book is my favorite in the series because I thought that it was the most gripping. This one wasn't as intense for me and wasn't as unpredictable so I ended up giving it four stars. But after that I wanted something very quick so I picked up Saga Volume 6 which is nominated for the booktube SFF awards so I needed to read it for that. Saga for me was starting to go downhill after Volume 4 Four, I think it was volume four and five. I wasn't a big fan of those and I thought that it just kind of turned into a kill off fest. So he'd introduce the character and kill him off, introduce another one, kill them off, kill off an old one, bring someone else in, kill them off. And it just wasn't very entertaining for me anymore. And so this was going to be my last try in this world and in this story. 
but this one brought it back to the way that the first few felt for me. It's very gripping, very entertaining. A lot of the plot lines are really developing well and are getting expanded. Instead of like the fifth one, there was just so much fighting and just death in that, and I didn't feel like anything happened, but in this one, a lot of stuff happens. This whole story is told in the perspective of a little girl, and she talks about the story of her and her parents and everything that they've been through. And if you guys don't know what Saga is about, it's about that little girl, and she she is the mix between two peoples that are at war against each other, kind of Romeo and Juliet-esque, where the guy from the moon and the girl from the planet are not supposed to like each other at all, but they end up falling in love. But it's not as fairy tale esque as that. It's definitely gritty and very adult. There's lots of sex and killing and bad words and all that stuff. Not for the youngest of readers, but if you are mature enough to read this, I definitely recommend it. I gave this one four stars. After that, I picked up Crooked Kingdom, which is also nominated for the BookTube SFF Awards in the YA section. This is the second book in the Six of Crows duology, and so it's over now, and I'm like pumped about that. I love duologies, even if the second book is very chunky. Honestly, Six of Crows wasn't overly amazing for me. I wasn't a big fan of the Grisha trilogy. I liked the world enough the Russian elements and the different categories of Grisha and the different powers that they had. And the world setup was pretty cool, the political system of Ravka as well as all of the other countries that are around them. I thought that, that was interesting, but I didn't care as much for the story. Taste of Crows started off super slow for me. It it's like over 200 pages or maybe 200 pages before the plot really gets going. So I didn't have the highest of expectations for this, but pleasantly, I loved it. The action starts off straight away, so I didn't have to wait at all, and I really enjoy that. I really like the characters. Some of them are better than others. I am all about Nina. Nina is the best character in this book. I don't care that much about Kaz, but Nina, I love her. <laughs> the political systems of this world and of this island have exploded and they are so entertaining and all of the different players are interacting and trying to one-up each other. And so I just, I just really, really enjoyed it. And so I ended up giving it five stars. I do say though that I think that you would appreciate these books better if you have read the Grisha trilogy. I don't think you're gonna like it as much if you don't already know all of those other things that happen, as well as there's a couple of characters that cross over between the two series, and this series is set chronologically after the Grisha trilogy, so it could potentially spoil things. No, it will spoil things if you read this series first and then try to read the Grisha trilogy because you'll know how a lot of that stuff ends up. Definitely read the Grisha trilogy first and then give this one a go, but this one's much better. <laughs> and the 55th thing that I read in 2017 is Dead Men Walking by Sherilyn Kenyon. This is the first book in the Dead Man's Cross series, which follows a couple of different characters. Devil Bane is an old warlord that had died in the past and has been brought back to life, and he is the captain of this ship that's in charge of protecting humanity. The ship itself is also a character that was dead in the past and then has been brought back to, I think this book is set in the 1700s. Her name is Marcelina, but the ship's name is the Sea Witch, and Marcelina and Devil have to team up to defeat Marcelina's sister and Devil's ex-wife slash wife, but then they died, so I guess that separated them. Marcelina's sister is trying to kill off the humans and wreak havoc and destroy the world, stuff like that. It also follows a girl who's not previously been dead. Her name is Cameron, and she is looking for her brother who's disappeared and she thought that he was dead but then he doesn't end up being dead and she doesn't believe that he's dead so she's on a journey trying to find him and those three characters are the main ones that you follow and they all mix together and they're all on this journey to try to stop Marcelina's sister. Even though this is the first book in a new series by her, it is heavily intertwined with her other series that she's done. If you read this before the Chronicles of Nick, you'll be spoiled for things. And also, I have not read the Dark Hunters series. There's a lot of books in that, and I've been told that you could just jump right into this. And you can, but you're gonna be a lot more confused than if you have some knowledge of the Dark Hunter world before going into this. There's so many different types of beings and different categories of demons and different categories of gods or warriors or ancient people and there's the dark hunters themselves but then there's other categories in there and there's the seraph there's just so many different things and there's a big info dump that tries to give it to you all at once but i just didn't fully grasp it all i needed maybe like a sheet that had tree of how everything is interrelated but i didn't and so I don't fully understand all of the different beings and how they relate to each other and how they affect each other, that kind of stuff. 
But from what I know in the Chronicles of Nick helped me out because I've read five or six books in that series. Besides being a little bit confused on the world because of my lack of knowledge of Dark Hunters, etc. I found this book extremely fast paced, very entertaining. It took me a while to read because I wasn't feeling well, but I did enjoy myself while reading it. I thought that it was also not going to be romance heavy and it is. <laughs> At first it wasn't and then there's like a switch that happens and it just starts being super romancy and very just bleh because I am not a paranormal romance fan. I mean Chronicles of Nick is about the maximum of that that I can handle so this is just more and I don't love paranormal romance. So overall I enjoyed it but it's not my favorite book ever. I still prefer the Chronicles of Nick over this. Will I continue with this series? I'm not quite sure. I had a good time while reading it and I'm interested in finding out what happens but I don't know if I care enough about the romance stuff that's happening to read all of that as well as for the plot. I ended up giving this book three stars. So those are the next five things that I read in 2017. Let me know down in the comments what you've been reading recently. Have you read the Dark Hunter series? Are you interested in reading this one? Because there is so much crossover with it. If you have any recommendations for me as always leave them down in the comments and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!